Hey guys, I think here. Today I'm going to do a painting on this orchid that I have for almost three years. This is Phalaenopsis. It's an easy type of orchid for somebody who doesn't have a green thumb. I don't really have direct sunlight in my apartment, so I can only have plants which are easy to take care of to realize my gardening dream. This Phalaenopsis is perfect for me because it doesn't need much sunlight and it's an indoor plant, so I only need to keep it by the window. I normally just water it once a week or every two weeks, and it blooms every year. The flowers last very long time for almost two months, and now is the peak period of the flowers, so I better act fast before they are gone. I kind of like how the flowers are staggered together in a bridge shape. The beauty of the structure of this plant is that there's a long leaf sticking out towards the same direction of the flowers, so that the whole weight of this plant is balancedly distributed, but not in a symmetrical way. And you can see that the cluster of the flowers are not as long as the longest leaf on the right hand side. And I really want the flowers to take up the whole space on the top of my paper from left to right. In that case, I have to shorten the longest leaf, but keep the tip of that leaf at the bottom right as it's shown in the picture. So the composition won't be top heavy. Now you may have noticed three sticks around the stem of the flowers. They are for supporting the flower stems. And I had three stems of flowers when I just got this plant. I wasn't planning to keep the sticks, but just because I've shortened the longest leaf, so to keep the balance of the whole weight, I drew the sticks as well. For the flowers, two main colors are used. Crinacodon rose and ultramarine blue. By mixing these two colors and changing the proportion, the color of the flowers will look more interesting, even for the first layer. Now comes the most interesting part of the flowers, the stamens. I try to stay away from the complex structure of the stamen and do a simplified painting with more intense Crinacodon rose. I'm saving some white space of the stamen at this stage and I'll come back and decide whether more details are needed. Since this is the first layer of the wash, I don't worry too much about distinguishing the petals at this stage because I'll come back and do a second layer with a negative painting. And you can see me using higher proportion of ultramarine blue in the mix of the color for the darker part of the flowers. I really enjoy seeing wash with more pigment spreading into the lighter part. Now at this stage, I really love the loose borders in between the flowers. To achieve this, I think the wet and wet technique is very important, and the use of 100% cotton paper is the key. It retains the water better, and it keeps the moisture for a longer time, which allows you to have more time to work on your painting. As the first layer is a bit dry right now, I'm adding more intense color of the stamens as I really want them to stand out. And I'm also adding some darker color for the petals at the back, so that one petal can be distinguished from another. But I only do this for a few petals, not all, but I still have loose borders among the flowers. If a second layer of the color is still not enough, 
then you can keep on adding more layers. For these two flowers at the back, I'm not planning to work on too many details of them because they are not the main focus. And I also use more ultramarine blue in the wash for flower petals so that these two flowers stay at the back. Here comes the stem of the flowers. It's browner towards the root and greener towards the flowers. So I changed the proportion of sap green and sapia as I paint along. An interesting feature of orchids is that they have bare roots. They are literally the same as the ones in the soil. The only difference is that if they grow in the air outside of the pot, they can absorb moisture from the air. That's why they are called air roots. And they are normally in a more opaque pale green compared to the leaves, but I don't have that kind of watercolor in my collection. So I just used some um, yellowish green to distinguish this roots from the leaves. And for a big surface like this thick leaves, I'll suggest you to use the biggest possible brush, especially when you're not using 100% cotton paper. Otherwise, a lot of brush strokes will be shown and it will make your painting look very messy. Another advantage of using 100% cotton paper is that when you make a mistake, you can remove the paint before it dries out. For example here, a dry tissue would help. One of the features of watercolor is that it dries into a lighter color. So if you are confident enough, you can use a more intense color for your first layer. Or like me, you will see me keep adding layers after it's dry. A strength of doing so is that with a lighter layer, you can always add darker color into it. But there's no way back. But of course, it takes more time and you have to be more patient. I really love the colors of this pot. I mix burnt umber with purple for this area. And I'm fascinated by the mixture of these two colors. The light comes from the top left corner, so I'm doing some shadows on the pot from the leaf above.
Maybe I've been too careful about not using too much pigment, and now I have to spend quite some time on doing layers. Instead of dry tissue, a wet, clean brush can also remove the paint to generate a highlight effect. At this stage, I used a bigger brush to pick up some paint and do a little splash. It always makes the painting look nicer and the flowers look more alive. I'm also adding some knots of the stem so it can be distinguished from the sticks. So this is it. If you like this video, please like it. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. If you are interested in my other artwork, I'll leave a link of my Instagram account in the description. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.